For you, it's, it sounds like hu ho, hu ho, hu ho. No, 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 no. <laughs> there are more than 30 types of vocalizations recognized in their natural habitat. Uh, one of the most uh, impressive one is called pant food, like It's a greeting cry. It's used to tell other chimpanzees where they are in the jungle. It can be heard up to a kilometer away. <laughs> That's a pant grunt. It's the sound a submissive chimpanzee uses to greet a more dominant chimpanzee. And that is a food call. It's the call chimpanzees use when they find their favorite food. I am very scared. The great apes do appear to have language, but theirs is limited. Humans are light years ahead. Children start absorbing language from an early age, possibly even in the womb. We start learning to speak as babies, and by the time we hit our late teens, our ability to communicate is phenomenal. The average adult has a vocabulary of around 60,000 words. It's clear that apes can't speak like humans. So what is it about our brains that allows us to learn and understand so many different words? We're trying to discover what it is about the human brain that allows us to communicate with a vast vocabulary while our ape cousins get by with a few grunts and noises. The scientists at the Great Ape Trust near Des Moines in Iowa are real-life Dr. Doolittles. They talk to the animals. Not going to do this. No, no, not that. For over 50 years, scientists have been trying to teach apes to speak. If apes could talk, then perhaps we could begin to decipher their thoughts and feelings. Rob Shoemaker has spent 12 years studying orangutans' language ability. He's trying to teach language to a species that split away from us 11 million years ago. Okay. Shoemaker starts with something close to most apes' hearts, food. Okay, ease. Do you want to start with these? That'll be really good, I know it. The orangutan has to identify the correct symbol for each object. We'll begin by naming some grapes. This is the symbol for a grape. Watch carefully now. Excellent. Well done. Good job. Good job. And the symbol for a banana. Okay, now watch carefully. Excellent. Good. Here's the symbol for apple. Ready? See what I have? Good. Watch your screen. That's a boy. Good. What I'm going to ask AZ to do now is to name an object. See this? Want to name it? Okay. Let's see what you can do. Here's the symbol for cup. That's a boy. Good job. Good job. Very, very good. Very, very accurate. Um, uh, when he's naming items like this. The ape very quickly learns to put similar but not identical objects into the same category. This is much larger, it has a handle, it's a different color, it's a different material and so on. If he understands the concept for something or the abstract label for it, he can generalize it very, very effectively. Good job. So far he's taught the orangutan symbols for a few different foods and objects. 
But there's a limit. Humans have an average vocabulary of 60,000 words. This orangutan works with a dictionary of just 70. It's impressive, but you couldn't call it language. To find out if language is unique to humans, we have to test one of our closest genetic relatives, the bonobo. Bonobos are also called pygmy chimpanzees. Physically, they are very similar to chimps, but they behave very differently. In the wild, instead of an alpha male, females form alliances that control the group. There are few fights. They release tension by having frequent sex. And the bonobos walk upright more often than chimps. Get through here. At the Great Ape Trust, Liz Pugh works with a small group of bonobos. They've been raised in a human environment from birth. They're now in their 20s. Can you get the oil, please? They're introduced to plenty of objects and activities in their daily lives, encouraging them to use language. Life is very informal. The bonobos have the run of the place. They even get to cook their own meals. The apes use a chart of symbols called lexigrams to communicate with Pew and director of research Bill Fields. What else would you like with your noodles? You want some cereal? We use the lexigrams uh, in how we tangibly live every day, uh, there, uh, whether it's science or feeding or sleeping or having fun or whatever it is we're doing, we use the lexigrams. It is the way we communicate. This method has produced remarkable results. In this test, the researchers ask a female bonobo to demonstrate her extensive vocabulary. Pressing the green disc reveals the symbol for a word. She also hears the word spoken. Lettuce. Good, we have to do 15. She then has to find the picture that matches the word. Watermelon. Liz Pugh believes the bonobo understands the meaning of over 2,000 spoken English words. And using lexigrams, it can communicate 250 words. Good. One more, I think. All right. 15 out of 15. Her brother has an even more remarkable skill. It's a controversial claim, but Kanzi could be the first ape in the world that understands not just single words, but whole sentences. Liz Pugh uses an assortment of objects to demonstrate. Could you get the shot and get the shot and, and give give baby doll a shot? On the tummy, that's pretty good. Kanzi, can you get the onions, get the onions and put them in the bunny hat? Get the onions and go put them in the bunny hat. Thank you. And pull up on that. That's right. Then, there you could take it off like that, see? Very carefully. And you could take baby doll's hat off too. And baby doll's shoe. All right. Okay. The language skills of the two bonobos are impressive, but they don't use language in the sophisticated way a human would. They can understand and list objects, but that's as complex as it gets. Communicating thoughts and emotions seems beyond them. Maybe it's language that divides us. Might have to move the table a bit. In the wild, ape vocalization may not have developed much since the chimps and bonobos split away from us around five million years ago.